Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline with Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Let me start out by giving the phone number 1 800 L O V E 191 1 800 568 3191. Fax number 310 854 4455. The show's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. He's a board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. And you're not. But. But what? But we have a guest in here tonight. And because we love him so much, he started the show in the Love Line because we studio. feel so comfortable with him, right? Actually, he came in and sat down, and no one had the heart to tell him to get up and leave. His name is Chris Hardwick. You know the boy. He's the cute one from the uh, hit MTV dating show, Singled Out. Uh, Chris, number one show on MTV, I hear? Uh, that's what they tell me. I don't know if that's the truth or not, but that's what I've been hearing. So you got eight and a half viewers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually nine, if you count the six-year-olds twice. And you just got done doing four of those. Yeah, we just shot four shows. And uh, how long does it take to shoot one of those? About 45 minutes. Uh-huh. We just sort of rip it, through them. If you screw up, do they go back and clean it up, or do they just, they just sort of steamroll through them? Well, I, we've done almost 200 shows, so by this point, if there's a glitch, we just go, we'll go screw it. Let's just keep going, and then we're going to know the difference. Now, is it – what season? I, you know, I don't know. It's hard to figure out MTV shows seasonally because most shows, they do a batch, and there's the hiatus and the reruns and all that. But does MTV run on that same sort of network-like schedule? Well, we do um, we do 65 shows twice a year, and that uh, 65 shows is six months of programming. Huh. So, so uh, I'm going to do some math. So you, you've done like three, three and a half years worth? No, well, three, no, almost two years. Yeah, about two years worth so far. What just, the hell just happened just, to my math. Just uh, focus well, on what you're did, saying. He said he did 200 shows. Yeah, focus on it's what you're right. saying. It's not a physics show. It's, it's every, 80, 80, 80 shows or 60 shows every th- six months. Yeah. Yeah, basically. All right, he said he did 200 of right. them, though. Right, yeah. Three oh, times. Oh, 65 every six months. Yeah. I thought it was every, every <laughs> year. Every I'm sorry. Four. Okay. Yeah. Everyone put away the abacus. All right, so we're uh, elated to have you here, Chris. No, oh, my old friends. Yes, it's nice to have someone you know, therefore you can abuse over the air. Well, most people don't know that we work together in Los Angeles. Well, we're on the uh, the mother station, the flagship station, as it were, uh, K-Rock, the fabulous K-Rock in Los Angeles. And uh, Chris does some work on the morning show. <laughs> he did He did some work on the morning show. He <laughs> did. Yeah, the past, let's speak in the past. I uh, have an alter ego that does a little work on the morning show, and... Uh, uh, we do cross paths now and again, and uh, we we were thick as thieves from from the word go. <laughs> What's not to like about this guy? Good lord! He's cute. He's funny. He's courteous. Oh. Well, you've seen him. You know how he is. He's a little shorter than he appears on TV, but he's a lot more cuddlier. Yeah, I get that. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. People go, "Oh, you're in that. You look bigger on <laughs> television." I never know what to say to that. Well, you're taller than Jenny, aren't you? Yeah. All right. Now, you won't diss any dirt on uh, dish, any dirt on Jenny, will you? No, there's no dirt to, to dish. She's real smart. She's incredibly why, smart. Why don't you say who she is for anybody who hasn't seen the show? I, I think they <laughs> – if they know who I am, they know who she is. Uh, Jenny McCarthy's a uh, ex-playmate, good-looking sidekick who's what? basically the Vanna going? White of uh, Singled Out. She, uh, she sort of corrals the guys and uh, throws it back to you and all that kind of stuff. Yes. And she's very intelligent. Yes, she is. Now, is it one of those things where she's very intelligent for someone who has an ass <laughs> like that? Or just, I mean, l- 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 if she was uh, 265 pounds and had a, a goiter, would you, would you be talking about how intelligent she is? Goiter or not, she's a very intelligent, uh, she really is. She All right, really so she does have the goiter. Yeah, she does. <laughs> All right, we're going to the phones, and you're going to straighten out the kids just like you do on your hit TV series. Walter, 19, you're on Loveline with Chris Hardwick. Yeah, how you guys doing? Good. Hello, Walter. Well, the first problem I have is (laughs) how come if you don't believe in God, you're presumed a bad person? Are you Mm. from Chicago? Uh, no. Oh, I just heard the God. If you don't believe in God. what? Why is that perceived as a problem? Um... I don't know. My, I was raised Catholic, and I'm seeing somebody right now, and uh, they just happen to believe that, you know, if you don't share the same beliefs as them, you know, you're off on your own thing. And Doesn't sound like a promising relationship, Walter. Uh, yeah. Here's the beauty of the uh, uh, zealous religious folks. Their first first move is to try to get you to uh, climb on board, you know, share a little of the good news and see if, you, if you're if you into it or Come not. Come to our church. It's Come non-denominational. It's Everyone, we, we just want to celebrate the Lord. There's a serious energy in there, man. I'll tell you, it's a feel-good Sunday. 
<laughs> You'll never experience anything like it. But if you reject it, then they're coming after you with a stick. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. I I just believe. I don't. I'm not really. You know. I just happen to think. You know, science. You know, what's wrong with believing that? And when you're in a relationship with somebody who happens to be religious, you know, their beliefs are always like as far as drugs and drinking and premarital sex. Yeah. Always go against. Like, <laughs> is I like it a, is it a, a sex thing, time. Walter? Is that what you're trying to? Right. I, I, well, listen. Let me ask. Look, as far as a long-term relationship, it doesn't sound like it's probably gonna. I mean, because in the long run, you know, you're you're not gonna have a lot in common if you're if you're an atheist and she she's a religious zealot. That's not on gonna... the other hand, if they both remain open-minded, they could grow from one another, change, change their minds. I haven't they met could... a, a ton of open-minded religious well, zealots. Well, you know, it doesn't say she's a religious zealot. She just have a certain set of I religious values. I that. I made yeah. a, a snap judgment, and, Walter. Uh, yeah. Do you think you could coax her over to the dark side? Ah, uh, no, no. She I won't. Don't, I don't. <laughs> I don't view me as on the dark side. Exactly. How religious is she? Ah, uh, very. Like not into premarital sex. And he he keeps going back to that topic, doesn't he? Isn't, yeah, that's what it's all Listen, about. Listen, watch Walter, Cinemax man. after midnight. <laughs> Get a roll of tissue, Walter. Yes. Listen, the obviously the uh, no sex before uh, marriage is a deal breaker for you, right? <laughs> yeah, you're, he tries to pass it off as this philosophical debate. Oh, I'm an atheist. Yeah. She has a problem with being atheist. Let me tell you something about uh, 19-year-olds. All philosophical debates eventually end up at the penis. Yes. <laughs> That's right. I mean, she can. You don't mind her praying. You don't mind the crucifix around her neck. You don't mind any of the uh, mores that she she or, or beliefs that she happens to uh, uh, behold. Jeez, I'm 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 talking like everyone's like I'm talking like someone's pulling every third word out and tossing it out in the dumpster, aren't I? Weird energy. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No, yeah. Don't start oh, with yeah. The weird energy. Absolutely but not. It's, we'll we'll get past it. All right, Walter. Yeah. Dumper and find yourself a uh, pagan whore. Okay. One more question. Where do you guys? Where do stand? I find a pagan whore? That's the next question. Where do you guys stand on the legalization of marijuana? I stand firmly for the legalization of marijuana. How about you, Drew? Uh, I am, believe it or not, not opposed to legalization of virtually all illicit drugs. I think the cost to society of these drugs remaining uh, criminal is phenomenal. I think we support a huge criminal system. And if we could actually have the government gain some uh, resource, some, get some money out of, out of selling these, then you put those resources back into treating drug addiction, educating young people. Uh, I think it would make much better sense than fighting a, a guerrilla warfare on the streets. Dr. Like Drew right told now. me to shoot up, Mom. Now, now by the way, it, it, it goes somewhat against the basic, basic principles of addiction treatment and how we think about addiction. That we're, it, It's all about trying to structure people's lives, and law should help people do that. But the cost to society right now is so huge that our legal – the laws such as they are just don't seem to work. All right. It was a yes or no question, Drew. I know. It's weird energy. Fantastic. Nate, 18, you're on Love Line with the uh, surprisingly handsome Chris Hardwick. <laughs> What's up, guys? But short. <laughs> okay, it's not, you know. Yeah. Okay. How are you, Nate? I'm pretty good. Um, I, I kind of got a little problem. Um, tonight, after dinner, I'm sitting here on the couch. I'm living with my dad because my mom kind of kicked me out, and they're separated right now. And uh, he calls up my mom, and they're talking about getting back together and stuff and, and you know, getting the house together. And then I, I kind of nod off a little bit, and when I wake up again, he's uh, talking dirty to her. To Ma? Yeah. Like, uh, I'm going to pull that apron up over your head and do something naughty to your private parts? <laughs> yeah. Is this the it, problem? Yeah. Well, I was in the room, you know, I'm sleeping on the couch, he's in the evening. Now, now uh, Chris... Be empathetic. Put yourself. No, in I that. am empathetic, but it, I mean it's the, good for the the couple that are getting their relationship no, 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 no. back I, together. Please, I, I don't mean that as oh wow, you heard dirty talk. But I mean, you know, if your parents are separated and they're expressing those kind of feelings for each other, good for the relationship, but not so good for Nate to be hearing it. Well, I, I don't. You put yourself in his position. It was like I'm I'm sitting right there and I'm hearing. This. Chris, doesn't bother you? Do you have parents? I don't know. Talk dirty, Drew. Let's see how. Do I you have feel. parents? Yeah, I do have parents. My parents do it. I'm sure they do. I, I, I understand, I but it, it, it is sort of a violation. It, it's it sort of bypasses some normal boundaries. Right. Well, but but he, if, if he did it, if the, if the father did it on purpose, I think that would be a problem. But no, it's look, it's fine in terms of what there was going on with their relationship. In fact, it's just, you should feel relieved and good about it. Your parents are rekindling their relationship. It's just I don't want to be well, uh, Chris. I'm kind of concerned about Chris here. What if you, what if you ever walked in on your parents and they were engaged in something? I would probably walk out. <laughs> How would you feel about it though? 
Well, uh, it, it'd just be one of those, ew, I didn't well, want to what, see that. Well, that's, that's what Nate's reaction. That's Nate's reaction. Is that right, Nate? Yeah. Yeah, that's what Nate's experiencing right now. Take a number, boy. <laughs> hey, Nate. Yeah. He thought you were sleeping, so you can forgive him. Well, he, he's a human being. He has urges. He's been away from mom for a little while, so you understand what happened. Yeah. But go ahead and uh, use some salad tongs to pick up the phone next time, all right? I, I, I would erase that from my mental Rolodex, though. Yeah, see? Uh, yeah. I'll tell you, that would come back every time I tried to masturbate. There would be Dad Great. on the phone Great, now you've with cursed Mom. the poor boy. <laughs> I certainly have. He's going to go and go, oh, damn that, Adam. He's <laughs> right. <laughs> Don, 26, you're on Love Line with Chris Hardwick. Yeah, hi, Chris. Love Hello. The show. Um, my question is for Dr. Drew. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a weird question. Um, I'm married, mm -hmm. and um, I'm 26. I have three kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, my husband and I have been married for seven years, and never once have we ever had to use condoms. Um, I can't have any more children, and I just found two boxes um, in with his uh, personal belongings. And, um, of course, he swore that um, he, he, you know, didn't use them. Um, my question is, I'm looking on the expiration date, and they expire in July of year 2000. Wow. So if you bought them, like, say, two years ago, would... Would that be normal as far as, you know, buying them two years ago and they yeah. expire in 2000? Yeah, but they have to be kept in sort of a, a temperate environment. In other words, if he was in a, it was in his uh, gym bag in the back of his car, it's, the shelf life is more like two weeks. Okay? If, <laughs> what, it's in, if, it? if it's in a pharmacy, the shelf life is 10 years, it sounds like. All right, but, Drew, do you know the answer? I mean, when you buy a condom, how far it, from, from the time you buy it at the 7-Eleven is I understand, the expiration date? As long as you don't keep it in an overheated environment or frozen environment where the, where the, where the temperatures are extremes, well, it's, it's, the, it's the expiration date. Well, it's the car in, in with police gear. Right. Uh, See, so I, I, would, I would not trust those condoms. Well, no, that's not the what, Drew. What I, Drew, I, hold on. Oh, Don, Don, yeah. relax. Let me straighten. Uh, what, the, what is the question? Poor, poor, naive Drew. Let I, me I stop. thought he, Drew, relax. Just, okay, I just, thought she was asking, could they use these? Okay. Take no, a breath. No, take my, a breath. Don? Yeah, I'm sorry. You take a breath, too. All right, here's what's going on. What is she asking? Don does not use condoms with her husband. Right. She has no need for these condoms. I see. She found a case of condoms. I see what you're And talking. they don't expire for another, what, what eight years or uh, six years? July of uh, 2000. <laughs> okay, another four years. Yeah. She wants to know what is this guy doing with this case of condoms. Right. And, and, and he says he bought them two years ago? Yeah, he he didn't he he didn't deny it. He he said they that he had bought them, but that he hadn't used them. And why did he, he buy them? Huh? Why did he buy them? Well, that's just it. Well, that, that you stay with that question. They make fun party don't, treats. Don't worry about the expiration date or you know just why did you buy them? Are there any missing? Well, the, both boxes were open and they are torn apart from oh. each other. But if you never if you never use condoms, that should be a pretty big warning light right there. That's yeah, no, why I, I she's hear, calling. I hear what you're saying. What I'm trying to figure out is he told me he bought them two years ago when we were having some problems. And I'm thinking two years ago and these things expire in July of you, you should go to a pharmacy, find that brand, and look at the expiration date. Wow. Oh, oh man. She's like... Uh, McGruff. The, uh, no, no. And if, the it's, and if, it's, dog. if it's 2002, then that's what it was. It was two Good years ago. Job, but if it's Mannix. 2000. All right, Don. Yeah, yeah. I, it, sounds, I, I, it sounds highly suspicious, I must say. I mean, if you had problems two years ago and something happened, why would he have just kept them around for two years? And why, when you have problems in a marriage, does a guy run out and buy a case of condoms Anyway, I mean that that doesn't sound like uh, I know the good we, we haven't found out what the problem the, was yet. Maybe is that he was messing around all the time. Well, Maybe well, that was the problem. Yeah. Was that the problem? Don't Do we want to find yeah, out? Yeah, we want to find out. Don, yeah, what was the problem in the relationship? I was in a car accident, a really bad one, and um, it, it put a damper on uh, on our marriage. And so he was messing around. I think so. I'm Don, sure. just stop making excuses for this guy. I, you are make. I, I, I mean, you are. I'm sorry, and, and I'm. Re, I, I mean, I know. I'm just. I, I'm, 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 and I have three small children. Yes, and my frustration. My frustration is not directed at you because you know it's the denial you're manifesting. I don't know. Somehow, the emotion of denial, the, the mechanism of denial, makes me very frustrated. Well, she is creating the denial. Drew, yeah, so I, I know, I, I know, and so, but I, behind that is, I'm sure, a great deal of pain, and I and I feel very sorry for you. And, oh yeah, and, I mean, and, and having been through an, a car accident, be abandoned by your husband, have to take care of three kids, it's just it's just unthinkable. But don't make excuses for this 
I, I'm sure you love your husband, but but hey, just thank him sta- for at least thinking of, of using. What? <laughs> Come on, this guy is an asshole. Yes. Can I say that? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, you yes. can say that, Don. What? I mean, I married this guy out of high school. I, uh, you know, I, I've spent. W- you, if you, if I hear one more excuse coming out of your mouth to defend him, we're going to hang up. Don, I already put her on hold. Don, it's time to uh, smell the coffee. Get involved well, with reality. And, and confronting him doesn't mean she he, she can't deal with him. She may be able to really reconnect in a genuine relationship with this guy and make him behave and put limits on his behavior. But if you go on like this, deny it, making defensive you know, excuses for him, he, he, it's just going to go on and on. I don't know. He did. She confronted him, and he lied. Yeah, so but, she, but she, she's... She's every every single thing you bring up about him. She's got an excuse for his um, excuses. She right. makes for him. All right. So the guy's fooling around on her. Let's move on. Screenbow. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Is this a name, Screenbow? Hey, what's up? Hey, Screenbow. You're 20. Wait, I have to see the spelling of that. What is that? You're on what? Love Line with uh, Chris Bow, Adam Bow, and Dog Bow. Okay, my major, major, major problem in my life right now is that I am extremely androgynous. Mm-hmm. Man. I am. Um, a gay male, believe it or not, and um, it's just, I don't know, my cheekbones are kind of high, and I have no Adam's apple whatsoever. I don't know if it's a result as, um, when I was younger, at age six, I was, di- I was diagnosed with having leukemia, and so um, I had a lot of chemotherapy and radiation. I don't know if that... It does change your, it de- you're probably short stature too, huh? What? Are you short also? No, I'm not. Lucky. It's Most... kind of amazing. I'm kind of tall, but wow. it's just my whole... Facial structure. I have an overdeveloped Adam's apple. It's really nothing to. Uh... He has underdeveloped. He has no Adam's. Apple. I'm saying I have. I have oh, you, you don't. You don't wish to have that. Do you see this? Yeah, it's huge. It's I've ridiculous. I've never had facial hair either, and I'm 20 years old. I yes, mean, you, do you do you have normal sexual drive? Um, I can't um, reach a sexual climax. So you, you don't ejaculate. No, I don't. Yeah, and it's it's you probably may not have ever produced testosterone. Maybe your testes never really turned on as a result of the chemotherapy, so to speak. Yeah. How old were you when you had the chemo? Um, I was between the ages of six and ten. Yeah, I mean you're very lucky that that was available to you. Is is this now this sort of phenomenon disturbing to you? The um, androgyny. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, it's just I've developed this complex because of it. Because it's just like I don't know. It's I look at myself in the mirror and just, I don't know, it's just this horrible feeling when people call me ma'am or something mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because I know what my true gender is. Did yeah. they ever talk about giving you testosterone or have you ever, did, were you followed by doctors for years after the um, chemo? Yeah, I haven't seen a doctor though in two years, in over two years because I've sort of been procrastinating about Why don't that. you get back and see if there maybe isn't some hormonal therapy that could be initiated? I don't know, but okay. I, I would think that might be a possibility that might give you at least some potential for some more... Um, male or or androgenic types of uh, features. Uh, Screenbow? Yes. Let me ask you this. Are you interested in women? Mm, not sexually at all. Okay, well, that, that, that is what since, I meant. Ever since I've been four years old, it's always been men. It's all right, so you're into guys. Yeah. All right. But he, but he has no he has no sexuality really about him, and he has no his identity is, is confusing to him and disturbing to him. All right, but he's into guys. Yeah. All right. Rainbow? Yes. That's fine. Be into guys. No, that's, uh-huh. that's not the problem. It's not the problem, though. Well, it's the solution. It's not the problem. I'm, I don't but care it, what the uh, problem is. I'm giving the answer. Do? What am I going to do with a straight guy? Tie my penis between my legs? I mean, that's yeah. not. What are you doing later? In other words, you can't. He, he has trouble being a gay, being a male, period. Right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if I go down a gay street, they think I'm a fag hag or something. All right, so you got to get back to the doctor. You got to get some of that testosterone in you. Perhaps that I, may I have, or may not I, be I a, that may or may not be something that can be useful at this point in time. I, I, I have a question, and this is this is a completely serious, straightforward question. Have you considered um, having a, having an operation? Have well, you considered change? Yes. Um, for about ten seconds, and then I just think about the damage that could be See, done by he, getting something like that. He, he wants to be a male. You want to be a, man, a male homosexual. I mean, he doesn't want to be a female and I have relationships with. Homosexual, yeah. exactly. He doesn't want to be, have, be a female have relationships with heterosexual males. He wants to be a well, male homosexual. Although I am not a doctor, I I, I think the Drew's suggestion of, of of seeking out a doctor who might be able to administer might might. I, I'm but not it's, sure he'd it's respond. A better, I mean, at least it's a it, it's a try, and not, at least if if not, maybe you can get in some therapy or somebody to help you straight out some straighten out some of your feelings about this. I mean, you you've been going it alone for a long time, and uh, you deserve a little more than that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. All right good luck, and we'll be back. 
Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. Fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Carolla. He is Dr. Drew. Tonight's special guest, Chris Hardwick. You know him from MTV's Singled Out. He's the guy who, um, well, yeah. he runs the whole thing. He, he uh, basically herds the cattle. I'm a nature show narrator, sort of a David Attenborough <laughs> type. I just narrate the mating process. And uh, <clears throat> all right, let's talk about the show for a second. When is it on? Because with MTV, it's every time I turn on, it's Beavis in Butthead, right? Or singled out, but it's all different times, all different days, and all over the place. And in give us give us the uh, schedule. Well, okay. Thank you. It's on uh, Monday through Friday at seven and eleven, and I think like three thirty in the morning. For whatever reason, but uh, and you get to go all over and do that stuff from like Daytona Beach and all that. Yeah, we did a show. We did a show in Indiana. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Rock on! <laughs> and uh, it was uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the town, but we went to Indiana for this kid who won a contest, and the population of the town was twenty thousand. And it was just one guy vying for a date with his nineteen cousins. No, 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 no. He'd already had all them. This was all new people uh, from the college, which and he li- the house that this guy lived in was like four hundred dollars a month. Was like a three bedroom house, but the only trick was that the house was sort of up on blocks. And the floor literally must have been made out of plywood because when you'd walk, you kind of walked at a slant, and you felt like you were being dumped out of the back of the house, like, you know, like the, like the back door was sort of an sort sort of an anus that was crapping you out of the house. And I, you know, if you're from Indiana, I, I wholeheartedly apologize for the anus reference, but uh, it really was. But you get to go to some fun places. You get to hang out at that beach house. Yeah, the beach house. Is now the that's summer. in Malibu. Yes. Now see, th- here's my take on the whole MTV experience from a from an employee standpoint. Even though I've never been an employee of MTV and I have no idea what I'm talking about, I still have a very strong opinion about it, hmm. which is not a whole lot of cash. Probably don't treat you like a regular celebrity. You know, Hasselhoff, I'm sure gets the uh, gets pampered compared to what Hardwick gets, but. You get to travel all over the place. You get a bunch of snowboards and crap, and you basically get to have a good time. Boy, I'm depressed now all of a sudden about my job. <laughs> well, what do you mean? You get to go to all these big award shows, yeah, right? We saw you at the MTV Music Awards uh, last year. Doing... But I don't, you know, I don't, I, I guess, I don't know. I, unless people just don't pay attention sometimes. I don't I don't know if I look the same as on the show. I mean, I meet people and they go, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I work for MTV. I work on Single Out. And they go, oh, are you interning? Are you getting college credit? <laughs> Where's no, your blazer? No. Hey, but you are, but you, certainly you are the bell of the MTV, MTV ball, aren't you? I mean, you have the, the, hot, the, the you have the, the you have the hottest show on MTV. It's well, yeah. I mean, you're the biggest celebrity on that on that station, are you not? <laughs> Please be oh, candid. I I think I probably Kevin Seal is more famous than I am. For Who the TV. hell is Kevin Seal? Exactly my point. That Adam is Carolla. my point too. Thank you. All right, it's so back to the phones. We go. Amber, eighteen. You're on Love Line with Chris Hardwick. Hi. Um, oh, first of all, I want to tell Chris that my friend is, like, in love with him. So, yeah. What's his name? <laughs> Her, no, it's a girl. da 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 da, da. Uh, <laughs> Suck it to me? <laughs> yeah, her name's Ace Dog, and she really likes Her name is, I'm sorry? Ace Dog. Ace Dog. Yeah. This is, is the a, night of the weird names. Is that a birth, uh, birth? Yeah, birth given name. Yes, all right. Amber, you had a question? Um. Yes, okay. I have this sort of interesting situation, which kind of started out as a joke, but then kind of turned into this really big problem. Oh, didn't you ever watch Family Ties? That's so bad. Yeah, okay. Well, I called this guy that I know from my school one night, and we're just talking, and then he's like, yeah, who are you? And then, so I told him, you know, someone else, right? And then, I I hate him. Like, at school, I hate him. A lot. And so, I don't know why, but, and then we started talking on the phone all the time. And he thinks I'm this totally different person. Like, I've created this illusion that he's fallen completely in love with. Did you and give him a name? Yeah. It, is it some? Is it an actual name of someone who attends your school? No. It's, like, a different school. He thinks I go to a different school. Okay. And then I, I like, gave him pictures of an actual, like, different person. Right. Yeah, and then so... You must have some interest in this guy if you would go to this trouble. If you hated him, you wouldn't even waste the time. Yeah, but the answer is, uh, don't no. go any further in the communication. You've, you've really built a lie here. You want to get out before you continue with all the lies. Yeah, but see, now but now I like... Now, okay, even though sometimes I look at him and I think he's kind of dumb still, I like actually care about him, and I, now I don't know what to do. 
All right. Uh, no, whoa! There's some uh, producer feverish, feverishly writing this whole plot down and uh, calling Meg Ryan as we speak. I say uh, get Dick Clark and Ed McMahon to come out and say it's part of Bloopers and Practical Jokes 96. Amber, you, all, uh, all, you, all you can do is really come clean and uh, hope he's... How old is he? He's 18. No, nah, he's so horny he can't even see straight anyway. So that you're, you're actually, you said you're starting to feel for this guy. Yeah, because it's like... If I see him at school and I see that maybe something's going wrong, I worry. Well, mm -hmm. the, see, the, the really horrible thing is that you're you're invading this guy's psyche, and yeah. he thinks you're someone else. I mean, w I mean, you're gonna have to come clean, but when you do, he's probably gonna be really pissed. Yeah, off. it's very dishonest. I, I don't think it's any way to start a relationship. I mean, he's gonna, gonna he's gonna out. he's gonna feel emotionally raped basically right. because you you've you've gone into oh, his head. Okay, he's gonna be at least he's gonna be embarrassed. Oh, both of you settle down. What do you look like, Amber? <laughs> he's well, the I'm, man's man, isn't he? What do you mean? Are you attractive? Well, yeah, I guess. All right, listen. If 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 you're giving him a chubby, I then he'll be missing. right over it in a heartbeat. Seriously, think back when you were 18. Somebody jerked you around like this. It, it, it was a little disconcerting. But if, if some good-looking girl came up to you and said, "Hey, I'm really sorry, but you know what? I was kind of I, I was pulling the the wool over your eyes, but now it's me, and I've I'm strangely attracted to you." You'd, you'd be over it in a heartbeat, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Drew doesn't know it's radio oftentimes. Maybe if you're Samantha on Who's the Boss, but other than that, I think someone would be really upset. <laughs> Diana. Hi. You're 15, um, you're on Love Line. Yeah. Hi, Adam. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hi, hey. Chris. Hello. Hi. I think you're really cute. Oh, well, yeah. Well, thank yeah. You. yeah. Okay, my question is for Dr. Drew. Yes, ma'am. Um, I've been having a lot of pains, a lot of cramps, and I don't know, pains in my ab abdomen, abdomen, what is it? Mm -hmm. Abdomen. Abdomen. And I take birth control pills, and I want to know if that's one of the side effects. How long have you been on the pills? Um, I've been on the pill for like two months now. It's going to be two months. And where in your abdomen is the pain? In, in the bottom. like. Is it like a period pain? No, yeah, kind of. Have you been bleeding extra heavily or breaking uh -uh. through? You... Yeah, I've been breaking out, too. So. No, no, breaking through. Have you been oh, having mid-cycle no. spotting? Have you been having uh -uh. bleeding during the no. cycle? Uh boy, it is really no way for me to predict exactly what's no. causing it. It does sound like it, it is indeed pelvic pain. Is that right? Yeah. And, and are I'm, you sexually active right now? No, not right now. Have you been within the last couple months? No. You just take it because they for the, taste good? or yeah, Why do you take the pills? Why? Because it regulates my period. My period do you have period. a history of ovarian cysts or anything like that? Huh? Do you have a history of ovarian cysts? Oh, well, that, that happened to me once. You I had a cyst. Out. What pill are you on? Oh, let, let me go get it. Really no, wait. Right. Is it, is it oh, a triphasic? Yeah, I can okay. reach it. All right. Okay, let me see. It's called... Pez. It's orthocept. Orthocept. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, any pain in your legs or anything like that? Any swelling yeah, in your legs? Yeah, my legs are really sore. Go go talk to your doctor. I should uh, go talk to my yeah. doctor? Okay. Cause they, I have they... one really quick comment. Yeah. Okay, uh, Adam, I saw you on TV. You did. What were you on? Yeah, I saw you on Channel 39, NBC. I don't know. What the hell like, were you on? I was, was I being led from the courtroom? Like, no, it was low. <laughs> was the word defendant <laughs> underneath it? Did I have my blazer pulled up over my head? No, it was that love radio one. Oh, really? Uh-huh, and I saw you. And you sound, on the radio, you sound like if you're, like, ugly and fat, and you're not. You're cute. Wow. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> I sound like I'm ugly and fat. Because the way you talk, That's not bad, Adam. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> I think you should. Uh... Is it bad to sound? I think it's bad to sound ugly and fat. <laughs> no, it isn't. All right, but 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 you're into me, right? Yes, I am. All right, stay on the pill, baby. <laughs> yeah, I knew he was going for that. No, no, much too young. Yes, I am. Yeah. That's okay. Give another six I'll keep friends, I think. All right, yeah, we'll be friends. Okay. We'll hold hands and uh, skip stones on the ocean. And you can skate together when it's couple skate, Adam. That's so sweet. <laughs> Chris, seventeen, you're on Love Line. Hey guys. Hey. That was kind of a backhanded comment. <laughs> Indeed. I, I sound fat and what? Old? <laughs> I don't know. Ugly. Yeah, ugly. I, I sound ugly. Fat and ugly. The hell is that? You I sound say ugly, ugly things. Would you rather have said that the sight of you physically repulses me? Would you rather have her say that? I mean, well, at least it could have been worse. Yeah, you're right. It could have been Chris. the other way. I thought you were so good looking, and then I saw you. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> Chris, to dig out yeah. my eyes to listen to you. Chris, anyway, okay. the listener, yes. Um, my girlfriend had an abortion um, uh, about a few days ago, um, but since then, since really before then, she's really been kind of pushing me away. I really get that vibe. By before then, you mean since she's gotten pregnant? Not since the very day, but I mean for a few weeks. No, no. Once she found out she was pregnant, 
No, she wasn't crabby at first. I wasn't pushing me away. Well, she she turned crabby soon, but she wasn't doing. You know, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that the fact that she was pregnant made her crabby. I'm saying when she realized you had gotten her pregnant, she might have been angry about that. She might have had all kinds of mixed feelings about it, and might have been expressing that ambivalence to you. Well, uh, perhaps. But I'm also. I mean, I understand that, and and I'm not so concerned with that. What I am concerned with is, I mean, it seems to be going further than I thought it would. I mean, in terms of her pushing you away. Yes, I, I, I mean, I, I understand some anger, and I expected it, and I mean, I, I mean, I've put up with a lot. I mean, I'm not patting myself on the back, but, but because I understand that that's a normal thing. Right. You, you can't, you can't take it. I mean, it sounds like you're kind of taking it a little lightly. And the honest fact of the matter is that she. I mean, how old is she? She's 17. Okay, for a 17 year old girl to get pregnant and have to go through an abortion, she's gonna have some emotional uh, crises. To no, go through. no, I, I, I understand that. But I want to help her deal with it. Yeah, I right. But if she doesn't want you to help her, you can't. You're going to have to let her, you know, I mean, you should be there for her if she wants you to. Okay, what I'm asking you, though, is how I should confront her and ask her. I mean, I don't want to say, well, do you want me to help you? Because then maybe she'll say yes but or, or no. But... Chris, 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 relax. How long ago did she have the abortion? Not very long. Ago. How long? Like Saturday. Okay, so you've been enduring this pain for a whole three days no, now? No, no, oh, no, no. Oh, the humanity. Oh, no. it's like the Hindenburg. Three whole days. Imagine that. I, she should have been back on her feet and on the golf course it's not by what I'm Sunday. About. Well, I mean, come on. You've been saying she's been pushing you away, and she had the abortion three days ago. No, but she was pushing me away from before that. All right. Well, maybe she don't like you. Well, maybe not, but I want to know. I want to find out. All right. I'll tell you how we'll find out, Chris. I'll tell you what's going on. It's a very traumatic thing, and she cannot separate you from your penis, which got her pregnant. And and that's the deal. I mean, this is the they way. They do go together. They together. by association. Yes. This is the way the um, uh, female psyche works, especially the young, traumatized female well, psyche. Why don't we find let's out what Let's talk to her, Chris. Yeah. I'm putting on my kid gloves now. I'm putting the uh, velvet uh, crown royal sack over my tongue, and I'm going to talk some sense into You're her. You're saying we can't call her. Why not? Uh, because she's asleep. And if you, if you call an element, her, her mom's not going to let you, her talk on the phone anyway. Okay. So All right. So let's give you an answer, Chris. Give her some time. Relax. Whatever she wants is what she gets. If she says I need to, you need to back off and I can't talk to you for a week, then you sit at home for a week. Okay, fine. But I need I need her to say that. I need but her Chris, to know. Chris, you, you you really you really I, I, even if you're even if you're in pain, you really have to concede all of whatever you're going through and let her do it. I mean, you really have to forget about your needs right now. Right. She is yeah. Did you hear him? And his voice is all about. Yeah, well, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm gonna be so I'm gonna be so caring for her. But if she just. Uh. He Concern yourself like with a, me, I'll be fine. He sounds like a used he, car he, salesman. He, he's got to empathically connect with her and get supportive and nurturing of her needs and forget about his own, as Chris Hardwick is saying. That's the way to do it. If I, you want to write her a letter and express that you care about her and you'll be there for her if she needs you, but right. you, can't, you can't force her to give you an answer. Chris? Yes, sir. Not only are, the, are you the host of a tremendously successful dating show, but you're also sensitive and brilliant. <laughs> Line 1 800 L O V E 191 1 800 568 3191. Fax number 310 854 4455. I'm Adam Crowley. He's Dr. Drew. Tonight's guest is the fabulous Chris Hardwick, Sign the, beast. the uh, congenial host of MTV Singled Out. Now, Chris. Yes, Adam. Let's talk uh, just a moment about how, uh, how you got involved with that. You were doing some stand up, am I right? Just a bit, yeah. G- uh, attending uh, UCLA? Yeah, I was a philosophy major at UCLA. Oh, me. no kidding. Yeah. What kind of philosophy? L- it, just general philosophy. So UCLA is liberal arts, so everything there is just yeah, basic yeah. general study. Yeah. So, right, so I you're there for five years. Well on your way to uh, a, a lucrative carpet cleaning career when? Yes. When Now, did you complete your studies at UCLA? Um, I came about, I guess, about a, a quarter and a half short. Mm-hmm. Um, because I, I was going, I went to school for almost five years, and then I got offered a job with but, MTV. You know, you know, each of us are poster children for liberal studies and pursuing what interests you, and who knows what your career is. Well, and doing. the hard, the hardest thing about it is that when and people who are getting out of high school, you know, Adam doesn't get what I'm saying. No, I do, but I'm trying to figure out where you fit into this, Drew. I, I didn't intend to be in radio. I went, to, I went to liberal arts college. I studied very liberally. I studied no, I'm, I was working the doctor angle. 
And I didn't be, go into medicine to go into media, and I had no radio training or anything. I just it's just something that happened to me. Okay. And and it just you know it, it, the point being, I didn't go to a school where I learned how to be on radio. I studied as liberally and as broadly as I possibly could, and that came with me. But I don't in whatever I finally I decided don't to pursue. Appreciate you pigeonholing me, Drew, because when I was cleaning carpet out of high school, I had a plan. You did. Oh yeah. Oh, so you you were training for this as a carpet cleaner. Absolutely. Uh, well, okay. my first plan was to move up to the shampooer. I was yeah, just yeah, using the steam yeah, on for a while, scraping poo out of the carpet. <laughs> going someday, man. I'm sick of this. Uh, but you know, you attend. You, we come from a generation where our parents felt that it was necessary to major in something right. that was practical. So right. they always said you have to do something it's a mistake. practical. That's a mistake. And I go to UCLA, which is liberal arts, which is the antithesis of practical. Yeah. It's you know, unless you're yeah, a but nursing you, student. No, no. The, the more liberally you study, the more broadly you study, the, the more benefit that will come to you later. But I, I and yeah. I'm, I'm really starting to believe the college is, is is just too much of a financial financially based institution now. And now they're just prepping you. Now it's grad school you have to go to, or yeah. something beyond yeah. grad school. And All right. So let, let's. Uh, let, wow! Did we get off on a topic? Speaking of uh, philosophy, <sighs> let's bring it back to uh, Earth here for a second. So you're. You're at UCLA. You're getting ready to graduate. Yes. You're damn close. Yes. And just you, miserable. By you, the way, you're doing some stand up. Yeah. And you you hear about an audition or how does it go with the MTV? I had a friend who was you know knew someone who was casting for a show called Trashed, and they said, oh you know why don't you go in? And so I did, and I ended up getting the job, and and I was see ya to school, so I, I left. And so you did Trashed. I did Trashed. And how long did that last? <sighs> about four months. And, mm-hmm. not a more and then when it came time to do Singled Out, did you have to audition for that, or did they already know, well, know you? they said, well, you know, you did this other show and it didn't go as well, but, you, you know, you you have a better than average shot at this one. So that was, I, I was pretty lucky in that respect. And it's going great. And then, do you have a contract? Do you have to do, uh, you locked in for another three years or something? No, but I mean, you know, but as long as they pick up the show, I'll do it. Uh huh. And so. what about Jenny? She getting a little too big for her britches? <laughs> I don't know, really. She, she's making movies. She is making movies. I saw her on uh, Things to Do in Denver when you're dead <laughs> with Christopher Walken. Yes, yeah, she got this, as the nurse. Got this close to a sag card. Got, I think she said like <laughs> half a syllable. Well, because every, every time Christopher Walken go, could you leave the room for a second, please? Because they would always. This was always when they were doing business. <laughs> hey, see the movie, folks. She looked good though. Yeah. Oh, God bless her. Tom, 26, you're on Loveline with Chris Hardwick. Hey, how's it going, guys? Tom, hey. Um, anyways, got a few questions. One for Dr. Drew. Yep. Oh, um, I got myself into a bind not too long ago and uh, talked to a couple friends. My question is, I hear that um, STDs, AIDS in particular, is uh, less likely to be transmitted by a woman than a man? Is there any truth to that? There appears to be some truth to that. And how, how so? What's what's the whole deal? I mean, that the the most efficient fluid transfer. yeah, there's not as much fluid transfer. You don't have as much mucosal surface available for the virus to penetrate. That is to say, the lining of the vagina is a, is a mucous membrane. And you're putting in some fluids, and the whole area can absorb potentially. And it's like, uh, let me put it in layman's terms: easier to get an infection from a from a knife that's been uh, dipped in something and you've got stabbed with it, rather than putting on just like a, a gooey ski hat. Yeah, am I right? Well, I, as you think of the penis oh. as a protective dome. But uh, I mean. What what what? Where did this question come from? The, the, well, let me ask you this. Let me tell you this: the most efficient way to transmit HIV and probably other viral sexually transmitted diseases would be to be a receptive partner in anal intercourse. That's uh, the way you get uh, it most of the nah, time. No, no. I understand, but that's how you can transmit it very quickly. <laughs> like, no, nah, I ain't gonna play that. No, nah, that's not me. Yeah, that's well, not me. That's not me. Tommy, understand we're not forcing you into sodomy. Yeah, uh, we'd I, prefer I, it, but we're not forcing you. I, I just had a legit Lord. question. You know. It's, it's just the whole thing was um, I put myself in a situation that I really shouldn't have. What'd you do? Uh, oh, well, I uh, basically uh, got it on with this chick in a jacuzzi using no protection. Right. And um, I just, you know, I don't know what her sexual history was or anything. And uh, it was How of, long did you know her? Oh, about 
six hours. And she got on with you in a jacuzzi? Oh, damn straight. All right, I'm, let me go on a limb here. I'm going to say hope she's... there was some chlorine in that jacuzzi. Oh, there was a whole bunch of chlorine. I'm going <laughs> to dipping her. I'm, I'm going to go on a limb and say she's probably fairly promiscuous as far as her sexual history goes. If she was going to either climb that or on you're such you. an Adonis and have such an incredible personality that you immediately charmed a virgin. I ruled that out. I, my I, initial I, factor. I, I, I'm not I like saying to it's think likely. Was an Adonis. Yeah, that works. But um, well, anyways, I was just kind of you know. Just kind of wondering. Is, do you suspect she's an IV drug user? Um, you... Word was used. Oh, Thank oh, you. Sorry. Indiscriminately. Thank you. <laughs> I do. Yeah, believe me, I, I'll press one and the whole studio will catch on fire. <laughs> I don't trust myself. Hey, Tom. Yeah. Put scraps on the phone. We're tired of you. Uh, I just kick scraps out. <laughs> well. Well, look, uh, HIV is. Is still primarily in risk categories, though it certainly is increasing rapidly in heterosexual oh, females. Oh, being so irresponsible, Drew. I know, but it is still primarily in risk categories. All right, and the the, the message is: don't do that again without a condom. Yes, Bridget. Yes. Twenty three. You're on Loveline. Hi. Uh, first, I'd like to say, Chris, congratulations on your career. I was raised around comics because my dad owns a comedy store. I know how hard it is to get. Oh, really? Them. Yeah, so what's, congratulations. What's, what cities he own this thing? Uh, Sacramento. Oh. Yeah. There's an earthquake up there today. But you get all the big names. San, San, really? San Jose had a big earthquake. Oh, I mean, not, not big by 4.9, not big by... Oh, uh, Yeah, but they, they sit in kind of a sediment uh, that, bowl. That's a labia quake. That's <laughs> an even a real... Come but they, on. they got some damage, so... Yeah. Bridget? Yes. And, of course, the press, excuse me, but the press reports it as 20% chance that that's just a foreshock to a giant quake. That, you know, theoretically, every earthquake that occurs is a foreshock that's to, correct. A, to a giant earthquake. That's correct. Sorry, Bridget. Sorry, we were that's just... okay. You know, no problem. Yeah, go, no, go ahead. You, okay, well, you, my question is, um, I've been dating someone for five years, and um, I want to get married, and we talk about it every once in a while, and he kind of pussyfoots around the idea, and... Um, and I'm out on my own. I've been on my own since I was 17. I'm successful. I own my own advertising company. I also manage a store full time. Mm -hmm. And he's been living at home. He's been going to school. Um, he wants to be a police officer. He Jun junior college? Huh? Junior college? Yeah. He, yeah. he graduated. Okay. And right. uh, he went to the academy. And, and it was always like, well, when I get to the academy, I, um, you know, we'll do this. And, and every time we get to that point, it moves further. And I don't doubt that he doesn't love me, but it's just so frustrating for me, and I don't know if I'm just being impatient. I bet we should have an opinion about this. Uh, I, I'm, yeah, I think. Oh, you, no, you go ahead. Something just popped into my, my brain, and uh, I know it's a real pat answer, but I, I was thinking if you're driving around, if you got the keys to the rent-a-car, and each time you pulled in to gas it up somewhere, he goes, well, you want to buy it? And they go, uh, let me drive for another week. I mean... That's what it is to a lot of guys. Unfortunately, they got the keys. They got the unlimited mileage. They got, you know, maybe a crappy uh, American car that they can only pedal off on uh, Thrifty or Hertz. But the point is... Are you saying something up I, I No, I don't mean to liken you to a uh, gremlin or anything. Uh, thanks. Bridget, but the point is, is they're already driving. They right. already got the wheels. They're in absolutely no hurry to buy this car. Okay, now what about the, well, I want to make sure that everything's set and I'm... I'm able to support you in case... I, I happen to believe that that's an extremely important thing for most men. Okay. For many men, particularly men that are career-minded, that they're, they're, it's almost more important where they are in their life when they get married as who they're with. And if, it, if that's the priority for that person, you may, you got to hang in until the time is right. Because I mean, he's not saying you're not the person, right. but he's no, saying it's, it's not the time. I mean, look at, look, look, at the, look at the situation. You've got this little McMahon and Tate advertising thing going on, and he's still in junior college, and you come home and you say, hey, I did, designed all these projects. What would you do? Oh, I had a pop quiz. I mean, it's, I mean he probably doesn't feel I ate ready. a granola bar. Exactly. I skipped a class. No, but he, he's in law enforcement now, right? So is it that... I'm Chris, is he involved with law enforcement or is he? Apparently he is. All right. Yes. Bridget. Yes. Listen, you're young. Yes. A little too young. Statistically, yes. you'd be better off waiting a few more years. Okay. Don't push. Okay. Give him a little time. I mean, what's the rush to what's the rush to marry if he's not set with his life yet, honestly? Yeah, I guess I guess that's true. All right, relax. You're busy enough, right? Correct. All right. He's giving you some good love? Yes, he is. Believe me, that's going to end as soon as you take the vows. So <laughs> relax and enjoy the sex. You've got the company. Why try to plan a wedding? Jesus. <laughs> and we'll be back. 
We are back with the fabulous star of MTV's singled out, none other than Chris Hardwick. Sign of the beast. And Chris was just uh, telling us that uh, Singled Out has uh, not only a video that is due to be released. Why, yes, thank you for asking. But a book. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, how many people watching figure can read? (laughs) <laughs> oh, good Lord. They'll learn in a couple of years once puberty hits. And what What is the book? I mean, is it... It's supposed to be a... a, a the book is a guide to dating, apparently, which I I, um, I didn't write it, um, but uh, I haven't seen it, but I, you know... There's no pop-up section, is there? No, well, you would think so. You but certainly would. But the, but the a lot of pictures of Jenny uh, scantily clad. Well, I, you know, I. Okay, look, you got to sell. You got to move. You got to move product. I'm sure she'll be right on the cover. Chris will be uh, ant sized in the. In, uh, he'll be under the acknowledgement. No, it'll just say, you know, like in the yearbooks, it'll go, Chris Hardwick, not pictured here. Uh, <laughs> he'll be conveniently cropped, as we say. Yeah, that's right. I'll be on page 87 or something. So, do you get a piece of any of this with the book and the video? I, I, who knows? I oh, know. yeah. You're getting a big fat chunk of it, aren't you? I have no idea. Yeah, they got to compensate you because I hear they don't pay anybody on MTV. <laughs> That's all I hear. Boy, he is so controversial, isn't he? <laughs> Drew, he needs a spanking. Ser- Seriously, do they pay you okay? I mean, we yeah, don't have to I talk mean, you numbers. Know, but, you know, yes, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm very satisfied with my compensation. Okay, we'll we'll get it into a uh, we'll play a long round of is it more or less? Am I warm or am I cold? Uh, and we'll be higher, back higher, lower, lower, lower in ten. We're back here on uh, MTV's Singled <laughs> Out, <laughs> and we have the hose from Loveline. No, um, <laughs> what the... we're here with uh, Chris Hardwick from uh, Loveline, <laughs> from MTV's Singled <laughs> Out. All right, I'm falling apart here in really Dr. Are. Drew. Take tell three, me what's Dick. so funny. L- I, I'll tell one of the funniest I'll things. I'll tell you what's Dick. funny. And it, it's one of those things where it's one of those had to be there type of thing. But it, it's when I realized I was in love with my uh, ex stripper girlfriend many years ago. I went to, She had this great English accent. And um, I said to her, uh, I said to her, like, how about we go out or something? And she said, I can't. And I said, you can't. And she said, don't call me that. Oh. <laughs> she should have spanked your bottom. That's what she should have done. I liked it. <laughs> I said, cheeky bastard. I thought, now that's a sense of humor. Anne looks good in a thong back. Amy, Cindy, 23? Yep, that's us. All right. What do you want? Anytime you... Well, I need to talk to the doctor. Yeah, what's up? Well, I'm having a dilemma, actually... Cindy and I are having a dilemma right now. We're driving on the 5 freeway going towards Camp Pendleton. Mm-hmm. And we're about to go and cheat on our husbands. Why? With some Marines. Well, you, 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 Marines you don't even know yet. Well, I know, no, 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 no. I know we know them, but the fact is that we're doing this and we don't know why. But we don't care that we're doing it. Well, that's a hell of a platform. <laughs> how, you, how long have you guys been married? Well, actually, okay, it's just me. I'm speaking for both of us, but I don't want to feel so bad about all this, but it's me. You're going to go do it. I'm going to do this. How long have been married? A year. You're Amy. Yeah. Just right. keep driving, Thelma. You just keep driving. You've been, ma- <laughs> You've been married one year, right? Yeah, I've been married a year. And- well, it has been a whole year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. But you, know. still, it, you shouldn't, I, I feel like I shouldn't be doing this, but then I think about it and I feel, well, what the hell, you know? Well, something something is obviously terribly wrong in your relationship. Now, when you took the vows, do you think maybe you know love, honor, blah blah blah, till death do us part, blah blah blah? You think maybe that might override the oh, what the hell? I'm gonna go screw a marine motif. <laughs> well, see, the thing of it is, that she was blowing not... the priest during the time, so <laughs> exactly. she didn't hear all of it. No, I did. He's, a... he's not here. He's in Colorado, and so your husband's in Colorado. Yeah, I'm here visiting. Well, that's funny. They get the show there. <clears throat> okay, yeah, what's that's he true. doing? They do. They what? really do get the show there. What's, what's he doing in Colorado? Um. Well, he's we're still in, he's still in school in uh, in college, and he's back there doing his football stuff, whatever the hell he does. Oh. But I'm oh, here good. visiting, and when it's the thing of it is, is when I come back to call, to California, and I'm with my friend here, Cindy. This is what happens. Stuff like this happens all the time. Chris, uh, sorry, Amy. Yeah. Boy, I'm all over the Boy, place I'm tonight. I'm not having sex with a Marine. Back Amy, off. let me ask you. Yeah? Do you just kick open the door of the barracks like uh, Lou Gossett Jr. and bang on a, a metal trash can oh. with a wooden soup spoon and yell, come and get it? Yeah, nothing! <laughs> No, Take a number, boys. No, no. 
How do you do it? I, we, I've never been to Camp Pendleton, but we just decided oh, uh, how we're going to go. Air Force, Andrew? So where, you, where? Don't know, you don't know the Marine, Andrew? Andrew? Well, we do know them. We just met them this weekend. Oh, oh good. Uh, this is probably, I would say, in the bin of bad ideas. What? What, what have your relationships been like in the past? Very serious, and that's the thing. I've been in serious relationships since I was, like, 16, and I'm 23 now. All right, here's the big question. Yeah? Why did you get married? Because <laughs> I like the ring. No, why'd you get married? Come on. No, for real. Because I love the guy. I really do. But it's only when I come to California and I'm with Cindy that if, if you, I do this kind of if stuff. You really, that, is, that is 80s film mentality is what right. that is. That's hard bodies mentality. If you, you to... really love the guy, <laughs> I mean, and if it's important to you to be married, and it's a relationship you're committed to, don't come to California. But I have to. For what reason? Who's My putting... parents live here. Oh. So when I come and visit and I hang out with single Cindy. All right. Uh, right. Your parents are a bad influence on you. My parents are not. Cindy's a damn bad influence. Oh, Cindy's a bad influence on me. All right. Everybody settle down here. Amy. Yes. You're, you're thick as a sterno log. Let me talk to Cindy. There's no, no talking to you. Why? You're Because you're beyond. We can no longer reach you. <laughs> Incarceration is the only answer hey, for Pinocchio, you. Hey, Pinocchio, hand the range to Geppetto. We got to talk. All right, hold on. <laughs> you said that, that, got it. that worked. I can't believe it. That worked. Hello? Cindy. Yeah. Now, are, are you single? Yes, I am. Okay, so you have no moral obligation to any other man. No, I don't. All right. and, and But do you realize you're, you're aiding and abetting a, 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 an adulteress? I'm not trying to aid and abet her. Oh, boy. But you know what you're doing. No, you know what it's the, the, never happened before, honestly. All right, but you're driving her over there to, to get uh, loose with a bunch of Marines while her husband is probably uh, busting his ass in Colorado. Oh, we're on the way home from a dog game. We thought I'd go to San Diego. All right. Well, there's no talking any sense of these two. <laughs> Listen, here's the deal. Wear a condom. Right. What, what are you telling her? I'll tell them to wear a condom. Put Hester Prynne back on the phone. What? Forget, Forget it. it. Okay. Forget, Forget it. it. Look. I, I just, yes, thank yes. you. Thank you. I, you right. think that was a fake call? No. I don't know. I feel I, terrible I, I, for that guy in Colorado. Yeah, but let me just say this. When you marry stupid people, this is what you get. You always get what <laughs> you deserve. They just wrecked the car when you said that. Right <laughs> out of. I can't believe it. Let me. Let me. Let me see. Let me try something. Amy, hard left now. <laughs> now, watch out for the orange truck. No, but seriously, you know, I mean, if you're going to marry some dizzy-headed, uh, loose tramp. Who, who basically is going to go take in a Dodger game, get loaded, and go hump some Marines when you're out of town, then you get exactly what you but deserve. How, do, how does how does he know? I mean, I, I'm sure when he met her, she didn't say, Hi, my name is Amy, and my hobby's interest yeah, are but, screwing Marines but and people being a dizzy-headed... Are, that's why you're supposed to have a courtship for longer than a week. People are, have an amazing ability to attract... You know what it is? It's Mar- it's Marion Young. It's 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 the romantic yeah, it's, ideal that that uh, you know it's that. And, but also people, you know, some people need to be abused. Some all people right, need to be in those. Well, those I think I gave her enough abuse. But uh, speaking of relationships, uh, aren't you going out with a one uh, MTV compadre? Uh, Are you allowed to talk about yeah, that? Uh, yeah, I'll, absolutely. Uh huh. That's uh, Jacinda. Yeah, from uh, she's on the uh, the Real World London program. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. is that the latest Real World? Uh, yeah, but there's another one coming out in June. So she's the big black one, right? Uh, no, no, that that was uh, that was she was the uh, the the Australian. Oh, uh, what a girl. coincidence! You went for the model. Oh, you knew that, <laughs> <laughs> bastard. Yeah, we actually we live together now. So. Oh, huge mistake! What tremendous mistake! I beg to differ. The beginning of the end. Oh man! Let me explain my philosophy about living together. All right, sullen one. You can never argue with this one. Relationship has a certain number of days it's good for. Any relationship you've ever had, go look back on it. You could put a number on it. This, this is the carpet. We're not talking about turpentine. We're talking about a relationship. There's an expiration date. Oh, Here's what God. I'm saying. <laughs> you look back on a relationship. Pick a relationship you had in high school, whatever. This one was good for 17 days. This one made it 211 days. This one made it 727 days. But there's always a number. You move in together. You use up all the days in a row. You see, you could see each other once a week and you could stretch it out eight years or you could move in together and be over in three weeks. 
Good you see Lord. what I'm saying? Good Do Lord. Do you understand the math? I, I, I see I see your mindset. I understand I understand what, 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 what you're admonishing me for, but the fact of the matter is, you know, it's working and we like being together, so what's wrong with that? Oh, drop the facade. Oh, would you just stop that? <laughs> you're at each other's throats, aren't uh, we you? We are absolutely not at each other's throats. Uh, all right, so you guys you, are you getting along. You need a good fisting to loosen you up. Uh, all right. That's what oh, you God. need. I mean, come on. Come on, let's get back to the call. This calls. is the kind of This is where the weird behavior. energy's coming from, too. Right. Too much in the studio. Now we're going to get fisting calls. Let's get to the call. All right, Come on. Drew, hold on over there. How long have you been living together? Uh, about three months. Okay. What's she doing? Is she modeling? She's, you know, working and, and yeah, she's, she's, she's modeling. Actress and, and all that stuff? And and for, for her, her hair is a full time job. She, she must, was on this show. Oh, boy, these people, what the? They're killing me. I can't. Uh, what the? <laughs> she was this on this show. She has a ton right? of hair, this woman. She was Buy on... two drinks, folks. Buy two drinks. Yeah. She's the one I think of describing as Billy Crystal, right. or maybe that was her friend, but uh, I have a vendetta against her. Uh, no, I would say the guy from Sha Na Na. That's definitely Bowser. Bowser. That's Thank the one. Thank you. <laughs> Get a job. Uh, Ramon, Bye. 20, you're on Love Line with Chris Hardwick. Hola, Ramon. Hi, how are you? Hey. Uh, I'm calling down from Tijuana. Really? Oh, uh, Amy and Cindy should be there in about 20 minutes. Oh, man. They're, they're hot, hot, hot. They're scary, man. You get us on 91X over there? Yes. FM Baja California. Yes, they... Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, I got a problem. You see, my girlfriend doesn't like me to go down on her. She says uh, she doesn't like her, but she prefers to see me jack off, and I I, I don't get it. Yak off? Yeah. <laughs> come, on, come on. All right. Let me tell you, this her preferring you not to go down on her yeah. is, is, is the hand of God. Believe me. This is a blessing. <laughs> you are the worst man alive. I can't believe this. This is no <laughs> curse. <laughs> oh, come on. Tell me if Jacinda said, I forbid you from going down there. You wouldn't be the happiest I man alive. I will not discuss these matters. We're talking to Ramon. Let's All just right, shift sorry. the focus to Ramon. Ramon? Yes? Do you really want to go down there? Well, I I used to have a girlfriend who really liked it. Well, most do, yes. But she, this one doesn't like me to even go there. Uh-huh. And wh why? What do you think? Was she traumatized somehow? No, some some women just feel it. She thinks it might hurt her or something. I don't know. Maybe I'll bite her. I'm I'm guessing a bad experience at no, some no, point. No, no, no. Oh, so yeah. No, no, no. Well, not necessarily. She told me that she was a virgin when we got together. Mm. All right. All right, so she's not very experienced. Yes. And she's self-conscious. That's what that is. Well. Yeah. But she wants you to masturbate while she watches. Yes, I don't I don't get it. Does she go down on you? Yes, she loves it. Oh, really? Yes, I, I don't know. She's freaky. Does she have any sisters? Adam's going to ask for a phone number. I knew it. No. <laughs> Do you know kind of calls he gets drive. into? He was not in the show at all tonight. Now he's in it. I know exactly. Well, Ramon's. Hey, let me let me just recap Ramon's tremendous problem. Let me give you my theory on oral sex. He's yeah. got a girlfriend who forbids him from going down on her, yet cannot get enough of his penis in her mouth. This is <laughs> tremendously troubling. You know, what a dilemma! I, I don't know. I'm putting this guy on suicide watch. Ramon, don't try anything stupid. Why? <laughs> okay. Ramon, where do you live? Where in Tijuana? Uh, Otay Mesa. Hey, listen, Ramon. Yes. I'm going to need you to do a couple things for me. <laughs> oh, I need you to get me some bootleg pharmaceuticals, and then I want I you to... work in a pharmacy. Oh, fantastic. Beautiful. I want, the, <laughs> I want that dong-hardening catalyst. <laughs> and number two, I, w I want you to go right by the border there, and I want you to get me one of those big plaster ETs with the, with the uh, German pr uh, Prussian Nazi helmet on it. And I, I'm going to paint it myself. Don't paint it. All right, one of those big plaster Paris jobs? Yes, I know. All right, yes, that's what I... Want, we have great strip clubs down here. Hey, you been to the Unicorn? Oh, man, that's a gay bar now. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Probably was back then, too, but Adam didn't think anyone would know that. <laughs> I was wondering why <laughs> no, that... No sound effect. Is that the last time I was here? Ramon. Yes. The Unicorn, the one that's downstairs on Revolution? Yes. <laughs> a gay bar? Yes. Oh, for the love of Christ. <laughs> a lot of gay bars Hey, here. Ramon, you know, I used to, I, I went there like 15 years ago. You know what goes on on stage at those places? Oh, there's a new place where you can do the same thing. Really? Yes. Let, let me just say this. Mouth, Taste old Mexico, right there, underneath Revolution. <laughs> La Tapatia. All right, Ramon, we got to talk to people with actual problems. Okay. All right? Okay. Fantastic. I think he just called to sort of brag. We get that all the time. My girlfriend worried. can't get enough of going right. down on me. Right. right. No, no. We'll file that under, uh, I think my penis is too big. 
<laughs> we'll, we'll put that in with those calls. I think it's it's not actually that it's so long. It just weighs too much. I have difficulty walking. My equilibrium is thrown off. The vein is like this high up, and I can't oh, just like, make it stop. It it's, just... <laughs> all right. Lewis, 21, you're on Love Line glass. with uh, the fabulous Chris Hardwick. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Hey. And good oh. evening to you, sir. Oh, thank you. I guess my question is basically for Dr. Drew. Boy, you get all the questions. Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, my roommate smokes marijuana. Right. And he does it in his bedroom, you know. Uh-huh. He's pretty cool about it. But every once in a while, if I'm in either my bedroom or the living room or wherever, I'll smell it through the vents. Mm-hmm. And what I'm wondering is when I'm smelling it through the vents, is that causing any adverse effects on me? He's probably really high blowing it directly into the vents so it'll get into the rest of the... Don't you uh, love when guys... Watch this, man. Yeah. <laughs> when guys get really jacked up, they get a... Uh, Where's that damn dog? Come I'm here. Give him get my hamster stone. <laughs> and then basically the hamster does the same thing it's always did, was basically lie there on a, on, a, on some wood shavings. You can't stop eating the pellets. But they right? go, yeah. look at him. He knows he's stone. No, but then the hamster goes, oh, my God, they're looking at me through the glass. Lewis? Yes. You're wondering if uh, that can hurt you in any way? Well, I mean, because I have to do drug testing at work, and um. is this doing anything to me? I really doubt it. If you were in a completely enclosed space and it was filled with smoke, it's possible. Well, uh, but it, 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 I really don't think it'd be absorbed enough to intoxicate you or to be shown on a urine screen. Lewis, where do you work? I work for a fire department. Mm, you a fire guy? Yeah, I'm a firefighter. Wow. Hey, chicks dig the firefighters. Am I right, they Lewis? Do. That is correct. They go nuts for the firemen. I don't know why, but it is true. I don't know what it is, because it, it, as far as working for the city, this is the route. Cops get a lot of crap. Yeah. Uh, God knows b- postal employers are basically, you know, they're, they're going to kill themselves if they masturbate anymore because they get nothing. What about sanitation? Sanitation, so They silk? don't date a lot. I don't think they date DMV, a lot. DMV, nothing but the fire department. Oh, yeah. You just wear the shirt and they flock to you. Is that why? i, I got to get one of those shirts, by the way. And do you have, on the, on the backs to say uh, why do firemen have bigger hoses or something like that? Or do you have some like firehouse nickname like Sparky or something like that? Or you? Um, no, actually, I'm called New York. Ah, see, there you go. There you go. Why yeah. is that? Chris's nickname is Fag Boy. <laughs> what? What? You... All right. Well, thanks a lot. All right, Lois, you're fine. Thanks. And uh, keep keep risking your life for uh, the safety of others. How'd you like to be in a firehouse and be known as Fag Boy? <laughs> I'll tell you, you'd be the toughest guy in the firehouse. <laughs> you really would. I'm not going down the pole after fag boy. <laughs> oh, let's just Brian, proceed. Brian, <laughs> 16, you're on the love line with the uh, easygoing and good-natured Chris Hardwick. Hey, what's up, guys? Adjective <laughs> supplement. Hello? Hey. Um, yeah, I uh, just want to say hi to you guys first and stuff like that. Right. But, um My problem, I don't know if any of you guys can answer it, like, I have a girlfriend right now. We've been going out for a while, like maybe six months or so. And, you know, like, I'm kind of wondering if she's like a bisexual or lesbian or what. Because, I mean, I've been noticing like weird things happening to her, like... Strange breath? <laughs> no, I don't know, but it's like she kind of like, around her friends and stuff, she acts a little bit more friendly than she should, you know what I mean? That could be just by your definition, though. Girls are, I think, um, by you know, like by a guy's definition, are more flirty than guys are with each other. Yeah, but I mean, what have you seen? Well, she's gonna kill me if she hears this. But well, there's one time, like, I accidentally like walked in. Like, I don't know. They were just like, at first, I thought it was like, oh, maybe just playing around, you know, girls and all that. But it's like. Cut, cut to the money shot. Cut to the money. Let me let me uh, let me define what accidentally walked in uh, to a six year old guy means. It means jimming the bathroom door <laughs> with a student ID, bursting through the door, and, going, "Why'd you stop?" That's right, Brian. Yeah. And you saw them doing what? Well, I don't know. They're just like, um, like kind of fooling around with each other, like wrestling. And, well, I mean, they're just like touching each other. And like when they walked in, it was like, were they kissing? Not, well, they're touching. You mean like Rowdy Roddy Piper wrestling or like rolling around on the floor or kind of? Well, kind of like, like that, rolling around the floor. And they were like giggling. And when I walked in, they were like kind of shocked. But they said, oh, don't think of weird things of us. You know, we're just playing around. We're friends. And It's very possible. I mean, girls can girls can say, hey, look, touch my bikini line. Feel, look at my touch my nipple. I mean, and, and it's not a big deal to them. Whereas a guy would not say... Does my left testicle feel heavier than my right? Those but, kind of things are, are not the same in the guy world. There's, I mean, 
I mean, now it's like... <laughs> well, maybe some, not in your world. Are... You're living okay. with supermodels and have oh, a successful you... TV show. Okay. My world, they're, the nut weighing, still, it still is a factor. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. Were, were they dressed completely? They're, yeah, they're dressed. All right. So they were... They were okay, this is not going to hold up in any lesbian court, is what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Okay. But, like, one thing that I did notice that... Like, oh, oh, well, we don't want to hear about what you noticed anymore. Uh -huh. This you gave us the, your best shot, and we still agree well, that it could. It's probably nothing. Okay, but you got to ask her. Cause, like, you know, every time I think about asking her, it's just like I know it's bad because she keeps like a relationship open and stuff. All right, like. but here's what you do. Here's what you do, Brian. You do that thing where you you sort of trick them a little bit. You start talking. You don't go right into it with the full frontal assault. You sort of sneak in the back window. You hey, wait. You and I could do Let's do a little reenactment. All you right, and me. You, let's you, do you, that. Okay. I'll, 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 you can be the... You want to be the guy or the girl? I, I'll be... I'll, you want me to be Brian? Yeah, you, you'll be Brian. All right. What's your girlfriend's name? Lane. Lane? Elaine. Elaine. Probably shouldn't have given that name out, but you're busted now. It's It's okay. Okay. Hey, Lane. Hey, Brian. How's it going? How you doing? Yeah. Uh, first, I want to apologize for the size of my penis. Eh? Oh, that's okay. It's no, it's no big deal. Yeah, you look good today. Thank you for working out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I noticed you uh, hanging out with some of your friends. You guys are tight. Yeah, we have fun. <laughs> you know, I know this is going to sound a little weird, but... Uh, Tell I, me, honey. I got to admit, sometimes I look at some of my guy friends and I think, hey, that you know, I'm not bad. Really? Yeah. I, that's just crazy. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I swear to God, I look at them like, and I think to them, what, wonder what they look like new. Do you, do you ever think about that kind of stuff? <laughs> Stop it. I mean, with your girlfriends or anything? <laughs> no. Oh, tell me you haven't been curious. Well, of course, everyone's just a little curious sometimes, but I would never actually do anything because but I love you, honey. Tell me when you're in the shower at PE, you don't just catch a little glimpse and wonder what it'd be like. Well, who doesn't? I mean, come on. And, and that's sort of the, you know. That's how you get it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. That was cool. The part of Elaine was played by Chris Hardwick. Thank you very much. Good job, Chris. Brian? <laughs> yeah? There's your answer. Phone number for Loveline, 1-800-LOVE-191, 1-800-568-3191. Fax number, 310-854-4455. Faxes like this. Dear Chris, I'm assuming they're referring to Chris Hardwick, our lovely guest and uh, host of MTV Singled Out. Do you think I'm lovely? <laughs> you are so funny and cute. Please get rid of Jenny. I guess they're talking about Jenny McCarthy. She is so annoying and such a slut. Now that's an uneducated claim. How would you do The that? show will be better. Trust me. Uh, again... This is the fax uh, signed. Uh, uh, your, your mom actually Hi, signed Anne. this one. Oh, and producer <laughs> Ann. Ooh. And let me tell you, the chicks are a little hot for uh, Hardwick over here. No. Yes, producer. No. Listen, listen, producer Ann rarely uh, puts her hair up in a bun, so this is something special. And uh, phone screen of Sherry's on her third set of underoos over there. Uh, oh, oh, Wonder, come Wonder on, Woman? baby. Wonder Woman. Yes, she uh, she enjoys you immensely. Another fax, Chris. Will there ever be an episode of Singled Out where us, the women, can try to win a date with the incredibly gorgeous you? Well, thanks to Dan Enright, that's not possible. Oh, he's, is he the producer? You, no, no. Dan Enright was a producer of the, from the Quiz Show movie that there are actually more stringent game show laws in this country than... You know, like if you if you're in possession of crack, you can you can get in so much trouble for cheating on a game show. It's How interesting! Unbelievable. <laughs> True. How interesting. <laughs> well, I, I have this knowledge. I have to express it to someone because no one else. And speaking of game shows and contests, yeah. I'm making a little segue here. Okay. Every time I watch MTV, I see they have these contests like um, you know, party with Dennis Rodman or uh, you know. You know, go to Hollywood. <laughs> Patrick Duffy inspects your anus. The new MTV <laughs> contest. <laughs> Patrick Man Duffy from will Atlantis. anally probe you. <clears throat> anyway, you, you you get you win this contest. You come out to Hollywood. You get a you get a walk on part in a movie. You get in a limo. You party with uh, the Red Hot Chili Peppers and so forth. And then it's like two bucks a phone call. Now, are they making? Do they end up turning a profit from the phone calls, or are they actually giving away junk? I don't know. No, you see, that's marketing, and I'm simply the host of a show. I really because it doesn't really know. sound like a contest to me if it's two bucks a phone call. It sounds like a sham. It sounds like a money-making deal. 
Well, I mean, do you ex- would you expect the Lotto Commission to give out free Lotto tickets and say, okay, if you get lucky? Well, yeah, but the way it works is MTV cuts a deal with these places. They advertise, you know, this uh, movie company or this hotel, and then they give it away. They do a little trade. Am I and, right, Drew? Yes, <clears throat> and they charge for the phone call. All right, all right. Don't smart off with me. Let me <laughs> ask you about this next thing. I want to host this grind show. <laughs> yeah, I'm Can sure I do you that? do. Do they have a host? Because um, I haven't had I the don't sound know who out. the host is now. All I know is that it's uh, obviously. I, I just theorize that they strap a camera to a poodle's head, and dogs are naturally <sighs> sniff crotches, and they they get the shots. I got to tell you, and and please be very candid. There's something about a woman in a bikini wearing the combat boots gyrating around that's better than her barefoot or in a pair of Reeboks. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? She's where you know I like vanilla. Where are you? The chicks are in the bikinis, and they're wearing combat boots, or they're wearing biker boots, and they're gyrating around on the grind. It's called the Republic of Russia. And it's a, it's, it's a turn-on. You haven't even seen these women in boots? I, I know who oh, you're talking about. Oh, don't you watch about. the channel I know who you're, you're talking on. about. Uh, don't tell me that's not a boner. Well, I... <laughs> Well, you know... All right, I, Jacinda's I listening. I understand. No, it has nothing to do with no, that. No, no, no. No, she's home monitoring. She's All right, not. we'll get back. You had to live with her, didn't you? I'm in love! You're in love with yourself. You're in love with the mirror, man. Why don't you just get off my back? You don't understand me. My parents don't understand me. I'm leaving this one-horse town. <laughs> All right. Oh, where are we? Uh, wait another half hour, though, till we're off there. Erica, 19, you're on Love Line. Hello. Hey. Um, My problem is that I'm 5 feet 10 inches tall. And I can, I mean, I can get dates with guys who are shorter than me, but they're rarely very serious. I mean, I've had serious relationships with taller guys before. It's just... Yeah, short guys can't commit. (laughs) I just don't understand the line of... Yeah, Mm. look at Chris. He's shacked up. How tall are you, Chris? I'm five. Well, uh, Jacinda and I are actually the same height. We're both 5'10". Really? And when she wears heels, she's, you know, the heel distance taller than I am. Yeah, when she puts her hair up in a bun, she's eight feet tall. So do you, like, feel uncomfortable with this or what? No, not at all. Why, you know, I mean, that's just a that's just a, a society thing, you know? Why would you feel uncomfortable? I don't. I have a guy friend of mine who's, like, really attracted to me or whatever. He's told some of my friends, but he won't go out with me because I'm five inches taller. <clears throat> Napoleon complex. You're five <laughs> inches taller than he is? Yeah. Wait a minute, how tall is he? 5'5". Uh, five, five. Oh, okay. All right. I, I I got my math all whacked out again. <laughs> oh, not back to math. I really should have stayed in high school. I mean, the guy's taller when you're lying down in bed anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but just a lot of guys. Good he, Lord. He, here's the deal, Erica. Guys like tall girls. Mm-hmm. That's that's, let me, that's l- it. Let me tell you why it is it is, it is wonderful to date a girl who is as tall or taller than you, because if if you're a guy and you date a shorter girl, you, you know, you bend down to, to hug them, and you have to, when you date a girl who is exactly your height or taller, and you, and you Im- hug... There, it's nothing but girl. It is just all girl. Well, let me say this. I like a woman I can toss around like a sack of coffee. And why am I not surprised? I like a woman that's smaller than me because like I want to feel like, like the man like when I'm in bed. Also, Erica, let me say this. <laughs> and let me say this to you, too, Chris. <laughs> Absolutely. Please, listen. This is very important. The size of your penis is very relative, and it depends what you're putting it up against. And if you got some Neanderthal girl in there, if you have some tremendous, uh, you know, Russian shot putter in there, your penis is going to be dwarfed by her size. On the other hand, if you have a petite little flower, your penis is going to look gargantuan. Am I right, Chris? <laughs> what? Do you know what I'm saying? I think you almost made Homo sapien sapien, but just a hair. Are short. What? Neanderthals are short. Neanderthal. Well, it's because they're yeah. crouched well, over. All right. I, I meant uh, Amazon. What it, Amazon, yes. Thank you. I get that a lot. All right, Erica. All right. Be Good. proud, Be proud your of your tallness. Height. Yes. Thanks. Fantastic. And uh, fix the ceiling fan. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Da, da, I'm da, spinning da. out of control tonight. Chris, 29, you're on Love Line. Hi. How you doing? Good. Great. Well, I have a particular problem maybe you can help me with. Chris hope- is going to help you. Okay. Well, hey, anybody out there, it's thrown out on the floor. Let's see what happens. Um, I have been married two times. And I cannot find, I'm divorced, I cannot find a decent guy out there. I, I attract every scuzzbo and dweeboid out there. Ah, you're the only person who thinks that. <laughs> How in the world can I attract decent men? Well, first of all, I think it's the fact that you're saying, I only attract scumbags. It's the truth. <clears throat> the last date I went on, this guy was just, it was a blind date. I didn't know what he looked like. A friend of mine set me up. He said, she, she says, 
oh, he's so good looking. He's so great. He came up in a dirty T-shirt. His hair had not looked like it had been washed in a week. You went out with Dave Perna from Solis? No. <laughs> It was disgusting. Let Winona Ryder say, "My God, Chris." Yes, dear. All right, let me get a let me get a physical description of you very quickly, okay. just to make sure what I, I want to see what the guys are seeing. Okay. Big hair? Uh, no, These, long. Yeah, all right, long. Do you have one of those uh, twin haircuts where it's like kind of short in, in one part and then it gets real long in the back? No. All right, so one one length. Yes. Long. Yes. Okay. Fingernails? Any uh, unicorn decals or anything like that? No, I have them done to sport length. You you have them what? I, I think that means that they're short. Sport length. Oh, sport length. Yes. All right, that that's also called a scratch yourself length. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, you're 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 in good shape. Yes. You um you don't smoke a pipe. Nope. All right. Uh, you don't uh, wear a, be- a, ha- a hat that's fashioned out of beer cans? Do you no. have a visible penis growing off your body as sort no. of vestigial appendage? All right, so there's nothing wrong with you. No. You're just attracting these guys. Yes. Well, here's the deal, and Drew and I talk about this all the time. What is the one constant in this equation, Drew? They're all gross. No, Chris. No. Chris is the constant. Yes. Mm. The guys, they come and they go, and sometimes they come and they go, but Chris... <laughs> Remains. Do you realize that you're of such the mindset that every guy you meet is going to be scummy? You might be overlooking someone who's not scummy just because you... Well, or she may be, may be more the subconscious talk. That's enough out of your lip, buddy. <laughs> I'm she, sorry. I just she, lost uh, it for a second. That's okay. That she, that she attracts <laughs> and, the, the, and, the, the, and in some way welcomes the, the abusers, the ones that are going to treat her, not necessarily treat you badly, but they're not going to be what you want. Yeah. That's a serious question. What kind of relationship did you have with your father? Oh, great. Wonderful. I'd love to meet a man like my father. Well, that shoots that theory to hell. It certainly does. I but would love it, it. I would. I would. Is it? Is it? On. Is it that you're not open to anybody who is not like your father? Do they all seem like scumbags because they don't measure up to oh, the no. idealized no, no, relationship no, you had with your father? All. I, part of the problem is, is the job that I do. Okay. <laughs> I'm, uh-huh. a, I'm a prison guard. No, <laughs> I'm a machinist. Oh. I work for a major music company. Uh-huh. So you're sitting there uh, over a hot bucket of cutting oil working a lathe all day, huh? Yes. There you go. Yeah. And you're, you're chewing a little red man? No. That's disgusting. But when a, when a guy walks into the machine shop, do you grab for your crotch and yell out his <laughs> name? Very funny. No. All right. Chris. Yes? Date outside the shop, would you? Well, of course. I never dated. And, and listen, you got to understand that most guys are scumbags. So... It, Seven out of ten guys you go out with are, but I will I will bet you that Chris is glossing right over the guys. She's not attracted to the good ones. Because they're nice. They're just they're friends. Nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, Stu from accounting? No. Uh, he's, he's nice. Just... I want a guy like him, but not him. Right. I want to take Stu from accounting and ram him into Lorenzo Lamas. Yeah, I mean, he's nice, but he's worse than ties. <laughs> it's not nice. <laughs> Chris, you are rangy. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191, fax number 310-854-4455. I'm Adam Crowley, he's Dr. Drew, he's a board-certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. His name of the show is The Love Line, we're here with Chris Hardwick, he's from MTV Singled Out. Rock on. <laughs> I never know what to say after that, I just kind of... I know, it's like I could do a kind of a sports guy there. Now, let me tell you, let me warn you a little something about this MTV. Right. Oh, here they we don't go. pay that. No, I'm saying, let me tell you, you're living, you're living real high on the hog now. You're a real big shot around town now with your little following. <laughs> yeah, just you. And you're a hit TV show with the girls and the autographs, and you're living with the model. But here's what I'm saying to you. Sock some money away, man. <laughs> because seriously, now, hey, don't laugh it off, man. I'm not laughing at all. It's MTV. I'm, it's so scary you, that I must laugh. You familiar with that uh, that uh, Mexican singing group, Menudo? Oh, what a tragedy! <laughs> Here's what happens: as soon as the kids turn 16, they're right out the door. That's right. You understand? They're cut off, and they're like 20, going. Remember when I thought Menudo was cool? Exactly. Yeah, I know. I so know. I'm saying. MTV, not much different than Menudo. But you, it's not like I've been doing Tiger Beat kind of, you know. 
Oh, have you? Are you in any of those Tiger Beat or no, Team Beat things? No, Why not? No, 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 no. Oh, you got to get a new agent. Why? Why aren't you in any of those? Win a dream date with Chris this Hardwick. Week, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Jonathan Brandis, and find out what Chris Hardwick likes on his pizza. We follow him around as he goes shopping on Melrose. Chris Hardwick wears two different socks. <laughs> You'll be sitting there and they'll have like a little thought bubble. Exactly. <laughs> With a big black penis and in it. And they'll say like, I re- well, I wasn't going there, but uh, thanks for the quick oh, that, left. That would throw the teenagers <laughs> for a <laughs> loop, wouldn't it? What does this mean? <laughs> What's the symbolism here? All right, Chris, all I'm saying is save the money because once you get to a certain age, that MTV tosses you right out. Like a bad habit. That's Crap right. Crap you out like a used piece of corn. That's what you're trying to see. <laughs> Jenny, 23, you're on Love Line. Hi, um, I love you guys. You guys are so funny. Um, if I were stress incontinent, I would have lost a gallon by now. But anyway, um, my question is pre med. Pardon me. If she was what stress if, if urina- was, urina- yeah. incontinent. Oh, okay. Yeah. If I were stress incontinent, I would have lost a gallon by now. Okay. Now, like peeing in my pants. Yes, I got it. Okay, but um, anyway, my question is about um, men in general. Um, yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a very attractive person. Um, I have a good personality, and, you know, I do have a good body and all that. But um, I seem to have a problem with my intelligence. Um, as soon as a guy finds out that I am intelligent and I am eloquent, um, they dump me. And I'm wondering if... No self-proclamation there. <laughs> yes. I'm just wondering if... As soon as they find out I'm a genius, yeah. they're intimidated. And why don't you toss Humble in on that pile of... Uh, of compliments you just would gave you like yourself, Jenny. Back off, pleb! I'm saying that You'll not speak to me. Why they would dump me? I don't think. Why? Wait, listen. First uh-huh. off, uh-huh. you sound really hot, doesn't she? Let's. And Drew, you're not going to get involved with this, but she really. I can. She sounds good. I may sound fat and ugly, <laughs> but Jenny really sounds good. Jenny. Uh huh. Let me tell you something about stupid guys. Okay. Here's why I'm not going to take your argument. Stupid guys, when you're really stupid, you don't know when people are smart. As a matter of fact, you don't even know when really smart people are making fun of you. And you know, and, and how many times do you see someone who's maybe not the brightest bulb, they become totally successful and all the smart people go, damn, he was so stupid. And you go, well, but he was so stupid he didn't know he could fail. That's right. Stupidity, incredible blessing. I mean, uh, look at uh, Tony Randall. Practically a genius, and where's his career today? But he, yeah, and he sings some great songs, too. Did you ever hear the banana song on The Tonight Show? You didn't need it. Absolutely not. But Jenny, I pick stupid men. Listen, you go out with intelligent men. Yes. Here's why I'm saying your argument holds no water, because stupid guys don't know that you're smart, and smart guys shouldn't care because they're smart. I, it, no, because I'm smarter than they All right, are. but give me a for instance. Have you ever really gone out with an intelligent guy who looked at you and said, listen, I'm sorry, your intellect is, is too great for me? No, no, no. It happens after I beat them at one too many arguments. Mm. Like, you know, we'll talk about existentialism or something, and, <laughs> and I'll beat them. But it sounds, it, sounds, it sounds like you're trying to shove your intelligence in their face so I'm much that it's intimidating. intimidating. I, don't think, I don't think it's your intelligence. Uh-huh. I think it might be your approach. That might be it. And, and think about uh, Consider this observation. Let's say you go out with a guy, and uh, you go out for a little while, and you have a, a, you know, a fairly healthy sexual relationship, and then all of a sudden you say, oh, I'm too smart for you. I, who's I losing never, out in that? You mean? I would never say that. But you're saying it now. Well, I, I'm presenting the picture. All right, Jenny. I, I might think that, <laughs> but I wouldn't say it. <laughs> Were right. your parents both doctors? Oh uh, no, they're oh. not. No, well, another theory shot, there. Jenny. What's that theory? Well, I mean, like you know, like the the doctor, maybe like the doctor combo, doctor lawyer parent, the strive, 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 and then the kids feel that it's absolutely right. their need right. to show everyone that they're that they're that they're right. driven and intelligent right. and. Right. I, I don't. I've always had to show that I'm. Well, my brother gave me this complex when I was younger, so um, he just painted me as this really stupid person. I mean, I mean, here, here, there is the problem. I mean, so you're going to react out with every male relationship you have that early trauma you had with your brother by beating any male over the head with what you believe to be intelligence, so you don't have to con- deal with the feeling of, of whatever it was your brother made you feel inferiority. Or, or not worthwhile. I mean, like, let's I say mean, that, that's no kind of relationship. You know, the guy, that's, the guy that's, 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 home, a, that's a joust. The that's guy not will a come home after a day or and go, honey, yeah, you want to go out to dinner? Date with me either. 
Well, no, but you just said, <laughs> but you just said, you know, I mean, I have had this dysfunctional relationship, but I think I'm over it. I mean, it's baggage. Arguing about it's existentialism positive. should not be the kind of thing that destroys a relationship. You know, I mean, it, it's no, not... but no, no, no. I'm not saying that they break up immediately after this argument. I'm just saying that I get the sneaking suspicion that that's why they break up with me. All right, Jenny. Uh huh. Let me let me ask you two things. First, I'm going to make a statement. Anytime anyone calls us with a sneaking suspicion about why someone did something, they're always completely wrong. It's a oh, slice. Okay. okay. Now, number right. two. Let me just let me just see if I know men like I think I know men. After one of these uh, heated intellectual debates in which uh, you're you're declared the superior intellectually, <laughs> when you guys go into the sack, uh -huh. does he give it to you extra hard? He no. does. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who's smart no. now, baby? Who's wearing the dunce cap now, smarty pants? Am I right? Well, I'm going to a little rougher. little compensation there. All right. Well, listen, uh, go uh, hang out at a, a Mensa meeting, would you? And find yourself, uh, find yourself a guy with the bad hair and the pocket liner and the bad uh, tweed uh, sport coat with the patch on the, you on know the elbow. That's, and, like, that's like the actor. And there are a few of them in L.A. who say... I am so good that no one will hire me. Right. BS. I am just too good. They hire these stupid people. Right. That's like saying, uh, I can't get work in the porn industry because my penis is too large. You know why they won't hire me? Being too good. I'm just too good. That's right. You intimidate everybody. Okay. Let's just, it's like fiberglass on the ego. Just a little insulation to pad the. And, you know, and let me tell you, I'm not pretentious. I like a dumb woman. I really do. I like someone who I can take like a lump of clay and molder my own likeness. <laughs> There's a flag on the play. It's a throwback to his original major in high school. Yeah, that's true. I was a ceramics major. Thank you for pointing <laughs> that out, Drew. Heather, 21. I like to put him right on that potter's wheel and get a little... little yeah, you look a penis. I made a penis. I know you did <laughs> no, that. No, I made a bong. But oh, okay. it, but well, it was no, shaped no, like a penis. That's, of course. Heather, 21. You're on Love Line with the uh, refreshingly um, Come on, coherent adjective, adjective. <laughs> Chris Hardwick. Hey, how's it going? Hey. Um... Actually, my problem is um, I broke up with this guy in probably January. Now it's been that long. And he's following me to work and watching me. And he doesn't think I see him. But my friends at work say, hey, you know, your ex-boyfriend's over, you know, in that corner. You get a restraining order faster than anything. Right. <laughs> Document everything he does. You take pictures, you get any kind of records you can possibly get. Who knows what this guy's up to? You just oh, don't. Oh, yeah, because he's not getting so bad where he's like, because he knows what my car is. He's well, but you don't, you don't know what direction he's going to go in. If you guys broke up in January, now it's, uh, it's almost June. Five months. Yeah. Maybe six months later. Yeah. I mean, this, did you know him to not be a well person? Um, well, that, the whole reason I broke up with him is because he, he, had, he had just got a divorce from his wife. Mm-hmm. And um, he's only 18. Mm. And Ooh. he, j and then we just started dating because we worked at the same job. Which was what? Um, for the Oregonian. We used to deliver papers. Uh -huh. And we met there and just, you know, kind of started dating and everything. And then I just broke it off because he just, I don't know, he just was in love too much with his ex-wife, I guess. All right, Heather. Yeah. First uh, new rule of dating for you. Uh -huh. Don't go out with anyone who has a route. <laughs> I don't care what kind of route it is. Milk second, route, paper route, doesn't matter. No second, routes. And Never date a guy with a route. Second of all, avoid avoid dating those divorced under the age of 20. Yeah. It's probably a bad thing. Yeah. Yes. Especially all right, under but, the age of 18. Heather, 18 or under. He doesn't, he doesn't seem dangerous, though, does he? Uh, no. How does no. she know? How does she know? Oh, well, ba ba ha ba. <laughs> what are you talking about? I asked her. She dated the guy. She slept with the guy. She hung with the guy. Oh, he, and that obviously knows. means she knows everything about him. That's not true. First off, don't jump on the Drew bandwagon because that wagon's going nowhere. <laughs> Tell you that right now, Hardwick. <laughs> it's it. You know, I'll, you'll sit. You'll spend the last nine minutes of the show crying in the hall if you keep keep up with that attitude. I'm sorry, Mister Crow. That's better. All right, Heather. Uh, but do do what the guy said. Do what Chris said. Get the you know document everything. Alert uh, the proper authorities right. and whatnot. Don't don't assume it's. it's and you nothing. tell 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 one of your friends that if anything happens to you, Go explain to the situations and, and and then and that he is most likely not that anything is, but just in case. All right, and put it in a safe deposit box because we all know uh, justice will prevail. And at that bank point. sperm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already doing this. Are you really? Yes. Is, can, uh, is, is the hamper a hospitable environment no, for sperm? Not really. Make long. an ATM deposit. Dude? <laughs> Dan, 19. You're on Love Line with Chris Hardwick. Hey, Chris. Hey, Dan. Awesome job, buddy. Oh, thank you very much. You are awesome. You should go full time with the show here. 
Yeah, it is just a part-time Maybe, like, thing. I don't. Weekends or something. No, he means love line. You get summer vacation. You should. He needs to replace yeah, Adam. Love line for a while. He needs to replace right. Adam. Yeah. Kiss my ass. No. I could never replace Adam. Adam is way funnier than I am, just <laughs> by leaps and bounds. Yeah, well, Man. He you is. Don't need to replace him. Fill in for a while. No, that's fine. Hey, you know, if you want to go build something, I'll and maybe I'll fill in yeah. on uh, singled out. <laughs> Welcome to singled out. Man, I like big hooters. Let's just go to the chess category. <laughs> Can I go to package? Shut up, bitch. <laughs> that's that. That would be Adam. Dan. Know it all. Dan. Yes. You have any other dumb ideas? Um. No, I'm I'm full up today. That's it. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Thank you for sharing, and thank you for giving me this time to talk to you. All right. Who is this? Carl Burnett? For Christ's sake. We're going to a break. We are back. We are not giving out the phone number, nor are we giving out the fax number. You're screwed! But we are still here with the uh, knowledgeable Dr. Drew and the incomparable Chris... Hardwick, you know him as Chris Hardwick. Carbon based. From MTV's hit series, Singled Out. Anything you'd like to talk about before we wrap things up here, Chris? Yeah, I have two stories. Any projects? I did uh, I did a movie a couple of years ago, which we're just kind of finishing up and, you know, shopping around right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what's the title of that movie? Well, it's called Beach House, Adam. Now, who could turn down a movie called Beach House Adam? Well, it's not. Whoa, come on! No, no it was. It sort of. It sort of was made as a parody of '80s films, and it's. It's right. All those hard bodies and hard exactly, bodies too, and exactly. the sorority weekend and exactly, all that stuff. Exactly. My favorite time for for movies. Actually, the whole uh, the genre of women in prison is something I enjoy. You know, like the level, like the jokes are made. Like my character thinks he's Jim Morrison for most of the film because he eats a pot brownie, and uh, but instead of making Morrison references, we made Val Kilmer references throughout the entire film. So it's that kind of, you know, that kind of thing. Now, didn't I do a horrible voiceover on that? Well, as a matter of fact, you did. God, I was horrible in that. But thanks for doing it as a favor. <laughs> we'll get that checked to you real soon. Oh, yeah. I already spent it. So uh, you're trying to get this thing... Ba- ba- what do you do with this thing? You try to get into a theater or try to get someone to put it on video? Well, we've, we're, you know, like selling it foreign uh, rights right now. Um, oh, uh, yeah. This guy named Lee Slaughter. The Asians it. eat that stuff up. They love it. Is there Nudity? No, there isn't. Didn't there used to be nudity? Uh, I thought I only agreed to do it because there was some nudity. Well, we told you what we had to tell you to get you to do the voiceover. It wasn't a real, you know, yeah, yeah, there's breasts, yeah, yeah, large donkeys. with. Yeah, I, I showed up at the recording studio. I was like, where's where's the nipples? <laughs> Where are the nipples? That's, uh, I think that's a Peter, Paul, and Mary song, isn't it? Where have all the No, the, the mamas nipples and the papas. Gone. Mamas and the papas. Long time passing. All, all the right. nipples are down, the nipples all are down. All right, settle down. Okay. Everyone's a comedian. Well, Chris, thanks for coming in. You were here for a whole two hours, and it really only felt like about uh, 120 minutes. No. No, you're Wait, fantastic. The no, we would like to invite you back anytime as long as it uh, exceeds the uh, six-month uh, moratorium we put on all guests, and, unless they have... Um, Movies are something real popular coming up. Okay, so anyway, I want to thank the uh, beautiful Lisa for doing a great job on the phone tonight, the lovely Sherry for doing a fantastic job on the phone tonight, the angular one, producer Ann, who always steers the show in a good direction, the one nut wonder, engineer Mike, for uh, sitting on his keister <laughs> and punching up carts like that. I want to thank Dr. Drew for showing up tonight and keeping a uh, straight puss on while I was talking about God knows what. I do want to thank Chris Hardwick for doing a good job tonight. Everyone go uh, watch him on MTV Singled Out. Look for Beach House in a crappy theater near you <laughs> or bad video store. Buy and it. we will be back tomorrow. Been listening to Loveline. The opinions expressed on Loveline, especially by Adam Carolla, are not necessarily those of the staff, management, or sponsors, or even the character voices. Loveline, produced by Ann Wilkins for Westwood One Entertainment.